you would, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. It was the reading that we had today, and it's where we'll keep our, it's where we'll anchor ourselves for this lesson today. I want you to take this away. Jesus is the way and the only way that leads to God. There's the crux of your message. There's the most important point. I could sit down right now. Except, I want you to see why it is so. In Matthew chapter 7, starting around verse 13, we see a discussion of two different kinds of ways. And one way is an easy way, and it leads to destruction. The other way is a hard way, and it leads to life. This difference, these two different ways, these two different choices, it's not something unique to this section. We see this same choice given in Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. When Moses is talking to the children of Israel, he's telling them, if you obey God, here are the blessings. If you disobey God, here are the blessings are the curses. And he says this, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. The choice was there to make. And as we know from history, the children of Israel chose the path of destruction. We see this same choice given again in Jeremiah. The children of Israel, the great city of Jerusalem, is surrounded by the Babylonian army. God had sent Jeremiah to prophesy to the people to warn them, to give them warning after warning after warning. Turn back to God. Turn back to God. Turn back to God. And then the Babylonians are at the very gates. They are sieging the city. And now it has come down to this. You have a choice between life and death. Jeremiah 21.8 and to this people you shall say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. Well, if those are my two choices, and they really are the two choices that I have, then I really want to be able to identify which way is which, wouldn't I? Wouldn't that be incredibly important? If I told you that out front here, the two doors, we have two doors leading out, and I said, one of these doors, there's a guy waiting outside, and he's going to whack you upside the head with a baseball bat when you walk out the building. And the other door, I said, that there's a guy waiting out this door that's handing out $100 bills. And if I wasn't terribly specific about which way, which and which door led to which part, I think most of you would probably mob me afterwards to get greater detail on that, would you not? You would want to know specifically which way led to the $100 bills and which way led to the baseball bat? Wouldn't you? I know I would. <laughs> and fortunately for us, Jesus took the time to explain the difference. Let's look at the first part. Matthew 7, verse 13, the wide and easy way is described to us. Jesus says this, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. Now, I want us to take note, the first foremost thing about this easy way is that it is the easy way. It's the broad way. It's the most noticeable way. It is the way that most people are taking. And that's a characteristic of this way. I also want you to take note that this is a well-traveled and broad road. It's a comfortable road. It is a road that is paved with good intentions, but not obedience. It is a road that is paid with might have beens and ought to haves, but not what I did. It is a road that is paved with should have beens, but not what actually happened. It is a road that requires little or no effort whatsoever to travel. It is a road that I could travel mindlessly, passively. And it is the road that most people are walking down today. Notice, Hebrews, I'm sorry, notice Hebrews 11, 24, 25. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God that enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Now, think for just a moment. 
It required two things for Moses to not take part of the fleeting pleasures of sin. Did you notice what happened? Two choices had to be made. He refused to do it, and then he chose to do something else. You see, to walk the broad path, to walk the easy path, all it requires for me to do is just acquiesce, to accept, to not choose anything, to choose to do nothing, just to exist. And then I'll find myself walking down that broad path. Unfortunately, it is a path that leads to destruction. Jesus tells us this in John 8, starting in verse 33. They answered him, We are the offspring of Abraham, and we have never been enslaved to anyone. Who is it that says you will become free? You see, all the children of Israel wanted was they just wanted to continue with the status quo. They wanted to continue with the way things were. They wanted to continue doing things as they had always been doing things. Jesus says to them, How is it that you say you'll become free? And Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. If I continue the status quo, if I continue passively, if I continue mindlessly to listen to the world, then I'm on that path. I am a slave to sin. Jesus, or Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit says in Romans 6, verse 30, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's the choice that you have. Now we've identified the easy way. We've identified the broad road. Now let's look at the next one. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 14, we see this. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Notice, foremost, the narrow and hard way takes an active choice. It requires for me to conscientiously search for it and find it. It requires a choice an action on my part. In Luke 13, 24, Luke has this to say, or has Jesus say, Jesus says this, strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. The word strive, it comes from the Greek meaning to contend, to struggle. The way that leads to life is both hard and and difficult, but it is not impossible. It can be trodden. It can be walked. It is not a road that is paved with good intentions. It is a road that is paved with obedience. It is not a road that is walked mindlessly and passively. It is a road that is walked with conscious and thought and choice. It is not a road that I can easily leave once I've started on it. I know this because Jesus walked that road. And He points us to that road. He's shown us the way. Which brings us to the final part. Jesus is the way. Follow with me, brethren. Jesus points towards that straight and narrow way. And Jesus is that straight and narrow way. We've read this before, but it's well worth reading again. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's read that again. Jesus said to him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Do I need to read it a third time? We've talked about the I am's that Jesus has said. Here we see it. Jesus points us towards the gate. He points us toward the way, but He is, he is that door. He is that narrow gate. 
He is that hard path. Jesus is the way because of His words. John 6, 68. Simon Peter answered Him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that You are the Holy One of God. Jesus is that way because of His example. We see this in 1 Peter 2.21. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in His steps. 1 John 2, starting in verse 1. My little children, am I writing these things to you so that you may not sin? But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins and for ours, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know Jesus if we keep Jesus' commandments. Whoever says, I know Him, but does not know His commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. But whosoever keeps His words, in Him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we know that we are in Jesus. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Let me read that again. Whosoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which Jesus walked. Jesus is the way because of his sacrifice. Hebrews 10, starting verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence in the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that He opened for us through the curtain, that is, through His flesh. Did you see that? The question comes to you this morning. Are you walking as Jesus walked? Are you following the path that He trod? It's a powerful question. Now, let's look at something a little further. In this day and age, we need to realize that the vast majority of the people that we see, that we deal with, that we talk with, the vast majority of those that we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, they are walking the broad and easy path. It's what we're told in Scripture. One of the things that we see that identifies the narrow way is his exclusivity. There are few that walk the narrow way, but there are many that walk that broad way. It is easy for us to say, and maybe hard for us to understand, But there are more sinners than there are those that are saved. And the problem is, of course, is that the easy way, that broad way, it doesn't take any action. It doesn't take anything for me to walk that way. I'll just start doing that when I start living my life. And it just carries you along. It's just like a stream. You get carried along. Have you ever gotten caught? And this happened to my son. It was the most frightening experience I'd ever had in my life. He was walking a little ahead of me. We were at the fair. And he was walking a little ahead of me. And this crowd came out of a... Out of a they'd had a, some sort of a musical event. And the crowd comes out. And the, my son just gets caught in this flow of people. And carried along with him. And he's gone. And I look, and there's, he's, he's not there. And I look to the right, and I look to the left, and I walk around, and I'm calling his name, and he is not there. He's gone. He's been swept along with his crowd. And he didn't mean to. It wasn't his... He didn't realize what was happening. I got so nervous and scared that I went to one of the police officers that was there, and I was having them actually call, and right then I see him in a distance. <laughs> I've never been so happy to see him in my life. But he got swept along. And see, that's what happens to us in the hustle and bustle of life, in all of that happens to us, all the rush, and I've got to be here, and I've got to do this, and I've got to go to this job, and I've got to go take my kid here, and I've got to go to school, and all of the rush of life that happens, we get swept along. 
And before we know it, we're walking that broad path. Because the flow is heading towards destruction. The vast majority are heading towards destruction. What we need to do is to actively seek that narrow path. And we need to actively point people to that gate. And in doing that, what we are doing is we are pointing people to Jesus. That's what we need to do. That's the key. That's, that's, the, that's the idea. That's the program. <laughs> is to point people towards Jesus because He is the way and the only way that leads to God. And if we want to start people on that path, we point towards them Jesus and they follow the path of Jesus in obedience. And in that obedience, they believe in Jesus. They believe that He is the Son of God. And in that obedience, they are willing to confess Him as the Son of God, as Lord and Master of their lives. And once they've confessed, as they follow that path of obedience, they're willing to repent of past sins. And as they continue to follow that path of obedience, they're baptized to come into contact with the blood of Christ, which washes away all sin. And then as they walk that path, as they continue to follow where the Savior has trod, as they continue to follow the path that lays out before us, now this is an important part, and this is what is so amazing about that path is it's straight. Did you catch that part? If it's a straight path, it's a narrow path, it's a hard path, but it's a path that leads to life. And isn't that worth pursuing? Isn't that worth following? Why don't you do that this morning as we stand and as we sing? Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way.